Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. And welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is QCTV for another episode. We are here with Julie Renee, who is a brain rejuvenation expert working in the quantum field. She's got quite a treat for us today as we explore cell rejuvenation, DNA transformation, and wealth acceleration. Julie, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's so happy um, and fun to be here in this QCT with you. Uh, I feel like we are on a lunch date with you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's wonderful. It is. It's quite fun. So we've got some ground to cover today. Uh, let's start with you and talk about the work that you do in the quantum field. It really is revolutionary. So um, the latest work that you're doing, it's exciting. Can you share with us? Yeah, uh, I think the the thing that we've in, announced is, oops, excuse me, our brain study. <clears throat> We're doing cellular neogenesis. Oh, I didn't mean to. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> oh. <coughs> 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 And so we'll just take a quick moment here <laughs> as we know there are no mistakes and that's a big clearing that we're doing here on our throat chakra. So we'll just be back with, Ju with Julie in a moment. <laughs> Talk about throat chakra clearing. Yes. <coughs> we're in California. I just oh. took a breath in to talk and I got smoke in my throat. So. Yes, and so um, <coughs> sorry about that. We're so glad that you can join us in in California from California. You're fine. You don't have power outages. <coughs> there certainly is smoke, and so yeah. thank you for joining us. Okay. Okay, and okay. Um, take a minute for my voice to recover. <clears throat> yeah, we've been doing uh, what? <coughs> oh goodness. Okay, another. Yeah, take another moment. <coughs> Okay, and we are here in this uh, quantum conversation today, talking with Julie Renee, brain rejuvenation, and we're going to be discussing how we literally work with the quantum field in all areas of our body. So welcome back, this Julie. Is, thank you. We're Unscheduled live. tears and coughing. Sorry about that. Yes. I guess it's really a miracle to be on this planet. You know, it's been really interesting that California has been uh, really on fire for years now. <sighs> and all of us who live in California go through <clears throat> kind of an assault on our bodies with all the smoke and um, the air quality gets really low. So I've been working in the quantum field and I've been doing a, a brain study. Last year I did a six month brain study with 200 people and it was amazing. Um, we saw huge shifts in the brain for people. And you know, I had been working with uh, the brain one-to-one -one with individual people for a number of years, quite a few years, and getting phenomenal results and really miraculous results. I think, um, We've got, I've worked with Alzheimer's and dementia. I've worked with stroke patients and I've worked with people at the top of their game that wanna play more full out and maybe they're getting a little older, their brain isn't working quite as well as they want and to put them back maybe like their brain was 20 or 30 years younger. So what we're doing is a process of cellular neogenesis, a process of regenerating the brain cells and that takes place over about six months. Yes, and, and so in the quantum field, is that, um, how would you describe that? A relaxed state that we can access, the unified field? How would you describe it? Well, I think 
it's a little more different than that. <clears throat> So there's uh, Newtonian physics and quantum physics. In Newtonian physics, you think about like gravity and the apple falling from the tree. It's a thing that people study in university and high school. Quantum physics is defined as very simply particles vibrating in a field. And we're all part of that field of particles vibrating. So you, for spiritual people, we think about it as the field of oneness. And based on how the particles are vibrating, we get a good result or a, a result that isn't as good. And so what we're doing is we're activating the particles in your field to vibrate in a better circumstance for you. So we're consciously using our mind what the mind can conceive and believe it will accomplish. And we're using a hand movement and there's different hand movements. This is the quantum pump, the very basic hand movement that I first teach, there's 12 hand movements. And we're activating, first we're clearing, and then we're activating a cascade of new cell growth. So there's a whole process, a whole series that we go through to um, do that. So I think it is a relaxed uh, feeling while you're going through the process, but I think um, it's a, we're using an energetic technology to accomplish it without using any tools or any, um, no herbs or drugs or anything like that. So it's all um, energetic. All right. And so the quantum pump and all of that, mm -hmm. that's very interesting. It is energetics and that's amazing. So when people do that, are you doing it or do the people, do the individuals do it as they're activating their own field? Right. When I was, um, before I started doing groups, I was working one-to-one. -one. And so of course I would do it for people who came in with a stroke and couldn't speak anymore or whatever. We get these huge shifts within 10 or 12 days, people would be much better walking and talking and having a pretty normal life. Um, taking a group through, <coughs> I would appear on a live stream and then everyone would do what I would take them through doing. So the first thing we do is we would do a clearing chart and those clearing charts are really significant, they're big. So there's more than a thousand things that we're uh, clearing. We do a clearing statement, right? Permission and ability to have a fully functioning brain without any dis-ease um, conditions or core function, and then remove the nature of the problem. And then below it are lists and lists and lists of things, emotions and control and entitlements and spiritual interferences um, just many lists of things that we see what are the problems that are in the way that would cause people to have um, early onset of dementia. We had a lady who was a PR agent who at 67, her brain wasn't functioning well anymore. And so we use this chart and muscle testing. I, I'm very skilled at kinesiology, so I'm testing. So I create a chart for the whole group or I do it for an individual. Based on what the group energy is, I can identify what the problems are. And then we spend about an hour and a half uh, clearing so that there's no programming for the poor brain function. Then after we've made this beautiful environment for the brain, there's nothing telling it that it's supposed to function low. Well. Then we start the process of cellular neogenesis. The first step is to work with the stem and master cells, get them to 100%. From there, we're gonna test, we'll, we'll know that we've gotten all the stem and master cells in the brain to 100%. <clears throat> and then we mirror, we use a mirroring technique, which is the light of the cell. And then from there, we do a cascade of new cell growth and that's using the, um, the mitochondria. And the mitochondria, I would say it's kind of like a, looks like it to me, it looks like a caterpillar. It's a cute little caterpillar on the inside of the cell. And I imagine tickling its belly and out spurts a whole new um, cascade of new cell growth. And as long as people are drinking enough water, they're staying hydrated and they're doing the meditations every day, a half an hour every day, doing a quantum meditation, just staying positive and not doing any cell killing activities like uh, hard alcohol and 
uh, pain medication will kill brain cells. So that would turn off brain regeneration. If you were killing brain cells, it would turn off brain regeneration. But the regeneration goes on for about 190 days. So a little bit more than six months. Okay, beautiful. And the, the results that you're seeing from that is extraordinary. And it's its yeah. own um, academy of medical research or yes. experiential research. And do you find that the medical industry that you're um, bridging with the medical industry are uh, medical professionals in what we would call the Western, um, mm -hmm. there's my kitty, on the Western medical field, are they starting to become aware of this or take up an interest in it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, we okay. do have uh, medical doctors who study with me. So mm -hmm. definitely we've had 12 or 13 doctors come through our training programs, our um, apprentice programs and love the work. And they've stepped aside from their medical practice because they can't really endorse something that isn't part of their medical training. They've, they've had agreements and commitments and they have to keep those agreements. They can teach meditation or they can say, personally, I like this person's work, but they can't really incorporate this until they step out of like a big, you know, structure if they're in a, like a Kaiser or a PPO or whatever those are, those big groups, they can't really do that. So yeah. yes, doctors and scientists love it, but they can't say that they love it. Basically. Not yet, not okay. yet. But and you know, so, it's so funny because yeah. I had an intentional mock-up to have my work become part of our vocabulary, cellular neogenesis, is what the coin, the phrase I coined. And sure enough, I have heard it, scientists using um, uh, neogenesis of cells, they're talking about stem cells, and I've heard it in lectures. And um, I was the one who coined it, but they're, they're using that. So I think that somehow it's seeping in maybe on the um, genius mind. Uh, so it's getting in there. It is getting in there. So, and that's what we love. All right. I just, it's, it's pioneering work that you do. It's quite amazing. All right. Uh, let, can you share a little bit about the DNA as well? Um, and what, what you're doing with DNA on that cellular level, like cellular neogenesis that is changing too, right? Right. Yes, cellular neogenesis is one process of regeneration of the cells. And we will go through in our Energize program over the course of a year, we'll regenerate the entire body. In the DNA obliteration process, and we have a um, designing your DNA class actually next week starting, we work with the um, problematic DNA to remove. And you have to believe and know that 97 or more percent of your DNA is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, it's functioning very well. So we're working with the problematic DNA, but most of it is working very well. And then, so we, um, we restored the ends, the ends were of the DNA were clipped off by an alien race of our DNA, it's amazing. Found, discovered that in the blueprint when I was working the Divine Human Blueprint a few years ago. And then the other thing that we're doing with the DNA, in addition to removing problematic DNA, we can add DNA because DNA is mutable. So you can transform or change. So you can do something for the better for yourself with your DNA. Um, the DNA obliteration process itself is um, six, a six step process. And then Beyond that, we've been beginning to work with God DNA and the additional strands. Most people have, for sure, they have their two strands that are visible, but there's, a, there's an opportunity to have up to 16 strands of DNA. So we're experimenting and looking at that. What would those additional God strands do to benefit, to uplift, to help with the awakening in this um, new era? We're just leaving the old era of domination, suppression, and control moving into the new era of awakened equality, God information. And so we're really looking at all of that and embracing uh, the shifts. On a very physical level, I helped a woman who had 
uh, breast cancer DNA that she had the test. Her mother, aunt and grandmother all died of breast cancer between 45 and 65. She was 43, she had a three-year-old son and found out that she had the breast cancer gene, meaning she surely was gonna get breast cancer. She just felt that that was her death sentence. And she asked me to remove the DNA um, element that was cancer. And I did, and then she went and had the test six months later and there was no evidence of the cancer DNA any longer. So she has this beautiful life in front of her and no evidence of, she won't have that problem. That will not be a problem. So we have like a medical documentation that the process that I've brought in is a process that it works very well. It's literally changing the DNA. You've documented that. It's literally, that, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that that's the question when you have a test before and mm -hmm. it shows up, but then you do the work with you and it changes the DNA. Mm -hmm. That is so exciting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I think, yeah, we've had some of that. I, I am not overly passionate about documenting. I'm more passionate about... I don't know, the downloads and the energetic technology that I can embrace. And, but it happens that our students come in with cancer. And like today we were in a tumor cysts and growth class where we remove it and all the cancer from people's bodies disappears with our technique. It's a formula that we use and it's pretty rapid. It can be two weeks later after they've done the process and there's nothing left in their body of cancer. So we've had that numerous times. And um, to medical practitioners, they say, I don't know what you're doing, but just keep doing whatever it is because it's obviously working. So we've never had anybody fighting saying, this is terrible. Um, I, but it, over and over and over again, we're seeing the formulas that I've discovered over these 12 years of really focused, I've been doing this energetic, I've been doing some kind of energetic work for about 28 years, but in this way that I've been doing for about 12 years, we're getting real, uh, specific formulas that have a specific result that is pretty count onable. Count onable, yes, count mm -hmm. onable, reliable. <laughs> and again, I just love that it's making its way into the scientific community. And of course, epigenetics. This reminds us of epigenetics that we don't have to, um, you know, take that on. You're doing something on a much deeper level, though, right? Um, well, it's much deeper. I think the thing that I'm doing is maybe putting more specifics to, this is exactly how it works, not uh, kind of like an airy fairy. If you dream about this, it'll work like this and you can affirm it and it might change and it might, but we're actually really specifically finding the blockages, removing the blockages, clearing in a very specific way. There are um, three hand movements that we do for DNA and based on what we muscle test for, we use one of those three hand movements. And we're really following a procedure that is proven over and over again to work. All right, we have a question here coming in. Um, what is it that you are expressing from your quantum pump? Is it prana, intention, blessing, divinity, biophotons, fairy magic, telepathy, uh, pan dimensional attunements? No, none of that. <laughs> um, the, uh, we're setting an intention with the mind and then the hand movement allows us to rearrange the way the quantum field is working. Why are we able to do that? We have access to the quantum field through our golden rings, our halo. Most people aren't really aware that they have a halo. It's usually turned down until they're at a frequency of 700. Um, but it's, I guess what I would say I would say that it's because um, we're not really, we're not, we're, we are moving energy, but we're not using any kind of specific energy magic or anything like that. We're, we have an intention to shift something. We see it shifted and then it shifts. I don't know how to, else to say it. That's it's like that energy, mm -hmm. but it's not really, energy per se, we're, we're rearranging the particles and um, there's a specific 
like uh, with each of the 12 hand movements, like on this one, this uh, quantum pump, the shift in the field is happening on the upswing. On each of them, there's there's an identifying when the shift is happening, so what, how the particles are rearranging. Um, yeah, so I, I hope that's good. It's it's golden energy, so or the color of it is gold. You are reminding me of a female Dr. Joe Dispenza and the revolutionary <laughs> pioneering work that you're doing. So it really is amazing. And, and it's just wonderful. Let's do a little mini session with you. Can we do that for a moment? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. All right. Well, I, I was thinking, uh, as we were talking right before about what might be wonderful and maybe going into the quantum field of transformation would be fun for everyone. And, um, maybe just a, a kind of a, a feeling of expansiveness and joy. I know that there's been lots of areas, certainly here, we're in the middle of a lot of stress, even though we're totally unplugged from uh, the news and that there's, you're just looking at the smoke around us where you have that so let's, uh, let's go into this kind of joy, pleasure field. So if you could just take a breath in and out. And as you breathe in, breathe in positive energy. And as you breathe out, breathe out negativity, worry, and concern. Breathing in and out. Sending a grounding cord down from the base of your spine to the center of the earth, making the grounding cord nice and wide, setting the grounding cord on release and beginning to release any excess energy in the body. So if there's any stress, worry, concern, anxiety. I'm also gonna unplug from frequencies, transmissions and waves right now. So you might see your aura, the, ex the extension of your aura, being a little bit more fortified, a little bit stronger on the edge. So you're not, you're not absorbing any waves, transmissions and frequencies right now. And that might already feel better. Just have like a bubble blow bubble where there's a sharp edge to your aura instead of a soft uh, spongy edge. And I do see that seems to help. And then um, Opening your feet chakras, they're like lotus-like lenses at the bottom of your feet, opening them to earth energy. And let's just run some earth energy up through your feet, ankles, shins, calves, knees, thighs, out the hips and down the grounding core. And then opening uh, in the back of your head, there's a human spirit access portal. And it's a little bit like a skeleton keyhole. So I want you to open that little area up and bringing some cosmic energy. Could be from a star, constellation, a mountaintop, an island, somewhere where it's in affinity with you. Bring a line of that energy into the back of your head, one inch above where the spine meets the skull and then down through the neck and shoulders, arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, out the hands and fingertips. And then bringing more of that energy down your back channels. And then looping up through the belly, through the chest, through the neck, through the head, out the top of the head, like a beautiful Italian fountain, bathing and cleansing your aura. I would like you to imagine yourself sitting in the center of your head, in your throne, now we're uh, feeling the edge of the aura. We've made it a little sharp, or we've sharpened it up a little. Um, we can ooh, just feel the edge of the aura. And what we do want to feel is the pulsing energy of joy, the pulsing energy of pleasure, the pulsing energy of transformation and the quantum transformation field. And as you're bringing that through your uh, outer edge of your aura, we're allowing this to come into the aura. You might feel a slight pulsing sensation on the aura. It feels very joyful. And then we're going to uh, also feel that against the skin now as we've allowed that pleasure field uh, to pulse against the skin. 
already in the quantum field. We're just uh, experiencing the, the higher frequency of the field, the joy field, the pleasure field. So just allowing that field that you're already in to just become a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter, and feeling some joy and some pleasure pulsing against the outer edge of the skin and then going through the skin maybe like honey on white bread, how it just soaks right in and it feels so yummy. And going all the way uh, to the heart and feeling that beautiful joy pulsation against the heart and into the heart and then seeing the heart pulsing, pulsing that joy field, that pleasure field out into the cells, into the cellular body and through the spirit through the ancient spirit perception, through the energy body, and feeling the pulsing pleasure field coming from now the inside of you out and pulsing out to the outer edge of the skin and continuing to pulse through the aura and experiencing the joy uh, deeply embodied in your divine blueprint. And breathing in and out and being so grateful and appreciative of all the people you have in your life who love you and who you love. Being grateful for the air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat. Being grateful for all there is, knowing that transformation is at hand. And breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, coming back into the room. May it be with the blessings of the Supreme Being that this healing activation uh, be complete. May the entire world be filled with radiance, vitality, joy, and peace. Tatastu, so be it. So be it. We're all feeling so much lighter and <laughs> open and joyous from that. Thank you. Yes, it is a frequency. It is the energetics and we're feeling it shift. Awesome. And so when, when you're working with um, the program and you're working over the course of the body with this, can you explain more about what that's like and sure. um, moving through each of the body? What do people experience? Yeah, um, it's so different for each person because we all come with such different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So I think um, I will see comments like, oh my gosh, I just felt this huge relief. I got cold, I got warm. I felt heat up my spine. I felt it'll be different for each person because we're gonna be each coming with a very different set of um, conditions from how many lives we've incarnated. Um, I think one of the beautiful things about our process is it takes into account all lifetimes. So not just the, this body, this incarnation, but every single life that you've ever lived. And we clear from the beginning of you to the present moment. So we're really uh, working on such a deep level of really up leveling and raising your frequency, leaving behind things that might have been embedded from caveman or Lemuria or Atlantis or ancient Egypt, things that have just been stuck in you forever for eons and eons. Um, we're, we're clearing out karmic entanglements that go on for lifetimes where you have to keep coming back and replaying um, the picture with people. And so what that feels like is freedom. Like you no longer are tied to have an energetic feeling about people that maybe you've had a lot of struggle with. Um, I, I can say that people often feel a lot of joy, feel really relaxed. Sometimes people need to sleep, especially after brain regeneration. I encourage people if they feel sleepy for the first few days, when you're sleeping is when your cascade of new cell growth is happening. So I always encourage people to, if you feel sleepy after brain regeneration, go to sleep because the body wants to um, spew out some new cells. So we want those new cells. So let yourself drift off and have a 20 minute or a 30 minute nap if it's kind of an odd time, but let yourself sleep. Um, it feels good, it feels good. I think when I, when I work with people for a year or more, what I get from them is that they couldn't have imagined that their life could change as much as it has. 
And that sounds too good to be true. I know it does. But people go through, they were in a bad relationship when they start. And magically, somehow they get out of the bad relationship or their relationship is all of a sudden better. Because you have to understand that we're better. When we don't have all this gunk that's weighing us down, we're better. So the relationship improves or they move on. And the funny thing is I've had numerous students move out of a, like a kind of abusive relationship and into their divine complement in like the course of a year. It happens really, really rapidly because we're shifting on such deep levels that we're allowing for a change that's completely unexpected. Or people say at the end of a year, I could never have imagined that I would be this person at the end of the year. Like, you know, I started last year with hope that I would fix my bunion and my skin problem. And now I have this whole completely different view of things. Um, I think the other thing that happens in our program is there's a deep level of spiritual awakening, love wisdom, wise elder love wisdom. And um, people always say, I could never have gotten this anywhere else. So there's no church teaching this. There's there's no spiritual organizations teaching this. You don't get it in school. You don't get it anywhere. And here, people get a chance to really deeply understand how they how they work and how the universe works. Yes, it really is universal energy, cosmic energy. And it's really interesting when we look at um, the DNA, what you're doing with the DNA, and uh, it's the programming that we carry from lifetime to lifetime. Yeah. And so many of us are not aware of it, but it is all the stuff that keeps us from this joy and this bliss. And so it makes perfect sense that when you work on that and you clear that, that it will change your life, not on just the physical level, but on this expressive level as well. Exactly. And so, you know, isn't it interesting? We really need this work. So again, thank you for bringing it here in this time. You said in the beginning, it's a wonderful time to be alive because yes. this is our choice point where yeah. we can choose to say, Right. This is, you know, like if we're talking ancestral DNA, for example, and there's DNA tests out there that like let us know that there's a person over here that has similar DNA to us. And we can it, it literally helps explain how that ancestral DNA really makes us tick yes. and we may not even be aware of it. And this is everything from um, being if you know if you have a tendency to be road rage that's something spilling over in your life but you know it's like these characteristics i like to say they're the not so becoming characteristics there's also good stuff too i don't want to yeah. yeah. do that but it's all the gunk stuff and in your um in your work would you find that it's the subconscious mind is really some a force to be contended with and it's um belief systems too yeah, there's some of that. I think that there's also just a lot of weight of stuff. I, I, you know, we we make statements. So when you're talking about the unconscious, subconscious mind, it's like the I am this description or the prophecy you're self-prophesizing. This is suffering, not for me. But you got that from somewhere. All that stuff where you adopted that idea, you got it from somewhere. So it might have been family entitlements. Somewhere there is an imprint, a collapse, a match, an overlay uh, where you are behaving the way you're behaving because that was the way you were going to survive or that was the way you had to. I, I think one of the things I see is that people get more and more in harmony with who they are and what they believe themselves to be. So they're more and more able to make good choices for themselves. Like people know that they need to exercise yet, you know, they don't, or they know they need to eat in a particular way yet. They don't. And I think one of the things that happens is as the pressure of all of the uh, energetic, whether it's, you know, old emotions or entitlements or anchors or spiritual interferences, waves, transmissions, frequencies, whatever it is that's weighing becomes less and less effective, we're able to more and more be a stand for ourselves. And um, I love the word discipline, but most people are like, it's a scary word. We're able to uh, be disciplined, not use willpower to force ourselves to do something, but just to follow through, just 
it's a natural experience too. I love to exercise. My daughter and I go walking at 5.30 in the morning. I have a headlight on because it's dark here. And I put her in the stroller and push 55 pounds up the mountain with her. But it's, it's, a, it's a discipline that's easy and joyful. I don't feel it a hardship. I know, all, I think people think of the word discipline with like a punishment, but I think of the word discipline as a freedom. You know, when we do specific things and we follow through and are, are able to not uh, be at the effect of whatever might be floating around influencing us, we just get to be who we commit to be. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. This is a question that comes up. Um, EMF fields or 5G, do you have comments on that? Yeah, that's... Um, that's a trans, those are transmissions. So we have um, a six hour clearing class on waves, transmissions and frequencies. And there are over, there's about 140 that I've documented, but there's more than that, I'm sure. And they're typically from governments, from scientific organizations. And then you're talking about 5G, which everybody knows there's like, this is for communication. Um, all of this is harmful to us. All of the waves of transmissions and frequencies are harmful to us. Some of them are experiments. Some of them are not in humans. Some of them are on the wildlife and the sea life and all of that. Um, so we are working on in our academy in creating an energetic technology and an energetic circumstance where we would not be susceptible to waves, transmissions, and frequencies, where our uh, experience, our aura, our body would not absorb the information, even if it were in the air. And then to take that way back, I was exposed to the atomic bomb testing in the Nevada desert. I had 17 surgeries, multiple cancers, and I died twice. And that's actually how I got to where I am now and where I know what I know now. But from 46 to 76, the US government uh, did uh, tons of experimenting uh, with the atomic bomb in uh, specifically the Arizona, Nevada uh, desert. That was where they were doing in New Mexico. That was largely where it was. Now we have waves, transmissions and frequencies. Again, it's the governments and scientific organizations primarily experimenting on humanity. Can they affect how you feel? We'll have a group of people across the globe saying that they feel lethargic today. And, you know, it'll be multiple governments cooperating to see, let's see how we affect the general population. So what I've been working on in our academy, we've just, we're just at the tip of the iceberg with this. Uh, we've got some definitions going really well. We changed um, people's susceptibility about 67% in the first time through this first six hour class. And there's so much more to learn from this, but I think knowing that you can create a circumstance where you're not absorbing this is the first thing to be aware of, that you can create that circumstance of not being susceptible, not absorbing something that would harm you. So I think that's the first thing. Wow, okay. I mean, we can go into that and it's not pretty but as we raise our vibration and keep our vibration sustained, then that helps. It's what you're finding. So again, it's wonderful work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Well, all right. You had mentioned earlier as well, um, stem cells and the master cell. Can you talk a little bit more about that? That's also working in the quantum field. Sure. Um, the stem and master cells, the master cells are with you from seven days after conception. And so those are the cells that have the directions to design the gland, the organ, the system in the body. And then the stem cells are the potent cells that regenerate. So they're the ones that have the most information. They have um, the ability to repopulate. And what we're when they're in science working with stem cells, they're harvesting stem cells, usually starting with aborted fetuses and then they're replicating from that. Um, so they're starting with even before we're born, they wanna get the stem cells that are the best possible stem cells to harvest. 
but we're doing something different. So we understand that that's when they think that the stem cells are gonna be at their highest function is even before we're born. So then I back that up by saying that energetically, I've tested several babies who were newborn babies and their brain function or their cell function was between 40 and 60%. It wasn't even at hundred percent at birth. So that's a really interesting thing. And the reason for that is their stem and master cells are busy matching their mom. So in utero, they're beginning to get the downgrades because the mother has lower functioning stem and master cells. And we see them for adults, uh, mature adults, maybe between 40 and 60, stem cells are functioning somewhere between like 10% and 25%. They're really not anywhere near 100%. So that being explained, then we are looking in the divine human blueprint at the master and stem cells, because those are the ones that we can use to regenerate the area. And um, in the divine human blueprint, there are master and stem cells. The master cells are all at hundred percent. So we're matching basically our divine blueprint to bring the stem cells up to 100%. We're doing this typically by this hand movement, this hand movement, or this hand movement with a, a knowing that we can shift that. Sometimes it'll take uh, a couple hours. Sometimes it'll happen more rapidly, like 20, 30 minutes. So we'll just keep working on it. This, this one is for stuck energy. This one is to really shift when something is just stuck and it's not moving. And these, uh, these two are for the regeneration. Once, um, once we've gotten them, the cell, uh, the master and stem cells reading energetically, so now they're reading that they're at 100%, then we do a mirroring process. We're using uh, something in the stem cells that are existing in your body that are a little bit like uh, a, the spirit of the cell, the light of the cell. And um, this is what allows, so if I were to smile at you and you start feeling good, you start feeling a little bit of a tingle in your body, like, oh, she likes me or oh, she, she thinks I look nice or whatever you think when somebody smiles at you. That's actually that mirroring neuron experience. We're gonna mirror the surrounding cells that have been grown in at a lower function. So they're immediately getting a, a raise in frequency and function because we're mirroring to them, we're showing them something lovely. And what that's doing, again, is creating a beautiful environment for the new cells that'll be growing in at 100%. And the last step is using the mitochondria. So again, in the master and stem cells, the fuel generator of the cell, um, like I said, it looks like a little bit like a caterpillar. It's on the, what I've seen is when I look at it, like at the bottom inside of the cell, there's this little, worm-like critter, and, that, and that's the fuel generator, but it also holds a program for regeneration. And so by pressing on the mitochondria, just in your mind, not really, I mean, people don't really think that, they just go through the process, but we start the cascade of new cell growth. And from those stem and master cells, they will continue to grow new cells for in the brain 190 days, if it's done well and you continue to meditate daily and drink water and not harm the cells. Uh, in different parts of the body, like the heart might be 79 days. Each, each area of the body has a different amount of days that the stem cells will continue to produce new cells. And we get, uh, in a group, we get um, an improvement of 15 to almost 40% improvement in the different areas of the brain in a group. And then of course we see even much bigger improvements if you're working one-to-one -one with me because I'm the teacher. <laughs> so, um, but you know, I, I just get really excited. If you think about that's not the only time you could go through the regeneration four or five years in a row and really bring your brain up like tremendously. I think the other thing that I want to say is we do the work internally. And then what I like to see is that people do the external work. They, they start studying, they study physics or they study spirituality or they study, but start doing things that your brain, you haven't used your brain for. New, new instrument, a dance lessons. Um, this is a perfect time. There's programs for brain plasticity and just 
being faster with everything, being able to calculate and uh, improve your communication skills, all of those things. As your brain regenerates, we want to access greater and greater levels of your brain. So I know they say that the average brain is using somewhere between four and 10% of its capacity. And I, I have to say that's 100% true. That is true. Um, and uh, some people who are really bright, they still are at that, but they use genius brain. So they go out and use genius brain. But what I'd love to see, because we have brains that are meant to live with us for 700, 800, 900 years. That's why our brain is so, so much capacity. But let's start actually using it. Because if you, what you don't use, you lose. But also you're telling your body that it's not exciting enough to stay here 200 years or 300 years. If you're not using your brain, I heard this shocking statistic. It was something like 90% of people who go through university never read another book. Once they finish college, they never pick up another book. And I think that it is true. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it, but... <laughs> It's a learning journey. It's a lifelong learning journey. Yeah, right. Yeah. And um, all right, again, it's beautiful work that you're doing in this field. Again, you are such a pioneer. It's really powerful. All right. And I love that you've got this program that allows people to work with you. We're going to talk about how people can work with you. It's this monthly program that you've got. And it's almost like a giveaway, what we've got on the special offer today. Um, your assistant, Todd, uh, set this up for us. And it's like, wow, this is great. So share with us because people can work with you however long they want. And yes. they go through this whole system. They do, yes. So we uh, we brought you the, the we call, we've been calling it Growing Together, but actually this month we're changing it to Pure Potential. Pure Potential. Um, pure Potential. And um, it's, a, it's a whole year of evolving and full self-expression. So you'll be learning the basics, all the basics of how everything works with the charting, the hand movements, the intentions. Uh, we do prayer and singing. Um, uh, we do a love wisdom affirmation that's extremely powerful to set the energy. Um, and then we go through a year of transformation with money, with love, um, with all different aspects of your uh, full self-expression and joy. So um, it's, it's a wonderful uh, experience and um, it's a very popular program also. It's our community program. Beautiful. Up on the screen, we have a link where people can get access to that special offer. Again, it is incredible. So click that link and get started. The first month is right there and it's a <laughs> real bargain. So you can get started working with Julie Renee and rejuvenating, rejuvenate the brain, rejuvenate the body. We are working with the quantum field. All right, and Julie, Julie, I wanted to ask you. You were talking about the 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 smart people, the geniuses. Can go out into that genius mine. Yeah, is that the unified field? I guess so. Yeah, I haven't called it that, but yes, that is okay. yes. It tests yes. <laughs> it tests yes. Okay, um, and there's a couple of questions coming in. I wanted to ask you. Um, Sally has a question from our from our Q&A line, she says, um, and, and I don't know if it's relevant, but she says, when I'm in deep relaxation, meditation, I have involuntary arm and hand movements that feel like I'm being realigned and attuned energetically. And I'm curious if these hand positions are similar to the ones that you do. So we can't see what she's talking about. What, what, what do you have to say when people are feeling so. this? No, I think mm -hmm. um, that's a susceptibility to maybe her spirit guides moving her arms and her hands around. That is, that's not what we're doing. We're, con we're consciously setting an intention and using our hands in a conscious way. I, I like to express, and there's nothing wrong with her spirit guides helping her. That's a beautiful thing. Um, I, I like to express our hand movements and our charting is our um, prayer and contemplation. 
So the hand movements are really like Jesus came in and taught um, the hand movements for prayer and for connection. And we, I teach 12 hand movements. That's very much like prayer. And then the contemplation, you know, where we're free to free ourselves through prayer and meditation or prayer and contemplation. And so I like to um, equate the hand movements to prayer. Yeah. Yes. And um, it, it brings up the mudras that we know. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yes. And, and there's something there to that. It is and all you know, energy. It, it is. And it's, it's really uh, each system has brought in an energetic. It's like an energetic technology as something that clicks into the universe that opens a doorway. So the hand movements uh, in mudras, because I also teach mudras, um, uh, are really, a, they're, they like an open a doorway for something to shift or something to transform. Well, again, I just want to say how beautiful right now in our world that you're bringing this forward. It is so needed on our planet. And would you say what we see out here in this external world is a bunch of people's DNA uh, programming coming up to be cleared. It really is. If we look at it that way, yeah. right? Um, it's it's like everything that's not so becoming, that is exactly what we need to clear on yeah. this incredible journey, right? Yeah. And to make them all right, that everybody is right where they are because they probably have done a whole bunch of clearing already and they probably have more to do. And I think uh, one of the things is life and this opportunity that we have in this body is to transform as much as we possibly can. And whether you are on a coast life or you're on a grow life, grow life's so really hard. Um, you're here, you have an opportunity in whatever you see. I don't like that about myself. I'm gonna change that about myself. I know we've been, I've been challenging my community with really hard things. Like, you know, if you blame people uh, and that's a habit that you have, uh, commit to not blaming them. And if you do, call them and apologize, <laughs> which is really hard. You'll stop it after a week or two if you're having to tattle on yourself because you're blaming something people for something that you've done. Uh, yeah, so I think, I think it's all an opportunity to grow and to become uh, your greater and higher self. Yes. And that's what makes it so magical, this experience. It might not be so easy, but you know, um, you brought up a funny saying that I, well, you brought up something that reminds me of a funny saying. It just takes a lighthearted approach to it all, because I think that a sense of humor is a requirement in this ascension process. You know, <laughs> yes. everyone wants to ascend, but we have to lighten up to do so. And I, I recently, um, when when other people like bring up something that make us feel like a victim or like we're blaming, then really when we take that responsibility, when we own that feeling that's coming up and we don't blame it, we simply turn it around and say, thank you for helping me clear that. You know, it's kind of a big time. Sometimes it's not so easy yeah. <laughs> to say, thank you for helping me clear that. But if we really truly get that, it is powerful. And so I just wanted to share that because I think it's just a fun attitude to cop, you know? Yeah, I think um, along those lines, when you can get to the point where nothing is to blame, that you are entirely and completely responsible for everything that's showing up in your life, it's amazing how quickly things transform because now you've said you're the owner of every problem and anything that isn't in harmony with you, you have the power to clear it. Because when you assign blame, you don't have the power to clear it. You've assigned it to somebody else who has to do something, which ultimately they can't. You ultimately have to take the responsibility. So um, the even if you think, well, I didn't cause myself to get raped or I didn't. But when you can say, I'm responsible for everything that's happened in my life, that is the moment that you take the greatest amount of power for transformation. So that, that is your, that's your tool for power. If you want to shift rapidly, claim it all. Claim, I've, I caused this. I agreed to it. Maybe I agreed to it before I came in. Maybe I wanted to grow somehow by this terrible thing that happened to me. And um, I have to look at it and appreciate what has, what is going on and what I've learned from it and how I've grown. And that's when things can shift. 
And yes, and that's what it means by truly seeing the gift in all of it. So yeah. beautiful work that you're doing, Julie Renee, assisting our planet in this great transformation. Again, I call you a pioneer. You are a pioneer in brain regeneration, and we honor you. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here on this Quantum Conversation. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm going to put your um, special offer up here on the screen. For those who are interested in working with Julie Renee, it's all right here. You can do so. And it's on a month to month basis. So it's a quite a deal. And just embrace rejuvenation for yourself. So thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we will see you next time. Thank you. Now it's time to dance our way to the cosmic heart. Namaste. conversation and thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart as we raise our own vibration we raise the vibration of the planet this show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love access all quantum conversations special offers from our guests and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music, available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste. Namaste.